I'm Scott Al Miller. It is the 6th of October, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. And today our main topic is going to be addressing a post that was made on uh, on the show about why uh, someone thought that a lot of people are interested in residency here in Nicaragua. Because we asked this question, why are so many people pushing for residency when, when we run an analysis, we can't figure out and no one that we ask ever comes up with a reason why they're pushing for it. Everybody always gives a reason, but then that reason and doesn't apply to residency. So there was this post, it's quite long, and I'm gonna run through it with you guys uh, on today's show and uh, and see how that input applies to wanting residency here in Nicaragua. So thank you for posting this because I needed a topic for today and this is absolutely perfect. I think this is good information that a lot of people have the same opinions and questions and ideas about. So it's great to be able to dig into it. So thanks for that. We're gonna get to it right after the bump. Welcome to the show, and as always, I'm out in the eternal quest for the most beautiful locations to film here in Nicaragua Linda, and it is a gorgeous day, bright sun, it's warm, but it's not super hot. And before we jump into today's topic, I just want to read this post uh, that was added by On the Up and Up 5330, uh, who lives uh, in Managua and has this information about rent and everything, because we just had the episode yesterday about what it costs uh, to rent, where, where it's safe and affordable in different places. So this is great information about Managua. He says, I live in Managua and rent a two bedroom, two bath. So normally we see two bedroom, one bath, that's important. Two bedroom, two bath, furnished house, that we almost never see in a gated compound, he says with five homes, probably a small community thing. Uh, very safe, 24 hour guard caretaker and gardener on site. Rent is 350 per month with the water included. Electricity is additional, but about $15 per, per month and his internet is $32 per month. Everything is within walking distance. I can assure you these gems are pretty easy to find. Don't let the size of Managua intimidate you. Uh, and for sure, no one should be intimidated by the size of Managua. It is not a giant city. 1.3 million people in the entire metro is, if you compare that to American cities or Canadian cities, which I encourage you to do so, look at metro areas. I grew up in Rochester, New York, and well, I was born in Rochester and grew up closer to Buffalo. Those metro areas are each about 1.1 million or their combined metro is about 3 million, but there's a lot of countryside in between. Uh, so that gives an idea to anyone who's from my region of the world how big Managua is. It very much is just that smidgen larger than a Rochester or a Buffalo. I'm sure they've grown by now, so it's probably very similar to a Rochester. Actually, they're probably shrinking. But anyway, it's, it's similar to what they were in my childhood. And there's many cities around North America or Europe that you can compare in size. Uh, the difference is Managua doesn't have that downtown, like we've mentioned. It has a little, but very little. And it also has things like capital buildings that places like Buffalo won't have because Buffalo is not the capital of anything except for its county, uh, whereas Managua is a national capital. So it has some of those things are different because it needs an international airport, it needs a capital, it needs uh, like the, the actual building, it has all the, the federal stuff is around it. So it gives a little bit of a city feeling because of that, but because it doesn't have the high rises, not even the high rises that a Rochester would have, uh, for those familiar with the Northeast, um, in many ways it feels like a much smaller place but it takes a little bit longer to drive across because it sprawls quite a bit and it has more hills. So I definitely don't, uh, don't approach it with an air of, it's a giant city. Think of it as simply large enough to be a city. Whereas other places like Leon, a lot of people will be like, is this really like a city? Because the metro area of Leon is similar to the metro area of a, uh, a Binghamton or a Utica, New York, uh, which are much smaller than a Rochester or Buffalo. And it's not even as big as those. It's smaller than those, uh, but they're in the general ballpark. Uh, so the, you, you go find some references as to what a 1.3 million city in your area metro looks like and a 300,000 metro city looks like, and, and you'll have a fair idea. And then Granada is more like 150,000 metro. Uh, and uh, with that, I think you'll, you'll have some idea of just how small these places really are. Those numbers may sound big, but they're really not. All right, let's get on to, to today's topic. All right, today's 
post comes from uh, Ramil C. Patel. Uh, sorry if I mispronounce your name, Rommel C. Patel, probably. Um, now, he prefaces this. He doesn't know Nicaragua, so this is just ideas about residency from other places. So uh, none of this is he making Nicaragua statements, so we're not going to be correcting anything here. We're simply discussing these points that he has, and he has some really good ones that are very important about how people may be seeing the process. So we need to correct what people may be seeing. That's that he's really pointing out where the mistakes may be. I'm not familiar with Nicaragua as I haven't lived there, but there are some things I could add to the discussion with other places I've lived in regard to why many want to get residency. Firstly, so we're just gonna break these down one by one because this is a really long post. Firstly, when it comes to visa runs, many countries are starting to crack down on them. In Mexico, for example, the government is becoming very strict in enforcing that visitors can only come into the country for 180 days per year, and border officials are stopping those who are crossing the border just to reset their time in the country. This is a great one to address because in Mexico, the rule is 180 days out of a period of time, normally a year. Panama is similar. Europe is similar, but it's 90, 90, 90, 90. They split it up differently, but the, the general idea is the same, that you get uh, about half your time in the country and about half your time out of the country. Each one is specific as to how they do it. Every country is unique. But this real general idea of how those countries work is similar. And so what you're hearing is they're cracking down on the border, looking the other way at people violating the visa rules. And that is absolutely happening in more and more places because it became very common to simply break the rules and people would just ignore it and let you in and whatever is nice and easy. That is absolutely not what's happening in Nicaragua. In Nicaragua, the official rule is that you may exit and immediately return. There, the border can turn you away, of course. Any border can turn you away at any time for any reason. Even citizens. You can be denied as an American citizen the right to re-enter into the U.S. They don't have to let you in. There's some laws that say they have to, but there's definitely some laws that say they don't. And so good luck trying to get in because you don't have the right to do anything from outside the country. It, it when in a border, you're at the border's mercy. That is universal 100% of the time. Some countries would never mess with you, some will always mess with you, and most will only mess with you in extreme circumstances, but those are real concerns in a certain way. But when we're talking about this, this doesn't apply to Nicaragua. The 180 rule in Nicaragua is literally you get 180 days, and the instant you can return to the country, you are eligible for 180 days again. So there isn't a cracking down thing that can go on. That can't happen because coming right back in is following the rules. The only gray area there is, is the rule uh, that you can come back in immediately, or is there supposed to be a three-day waiting period? That we've heard mixed uh, uh, responses about, but we've never heard of anyone directly having to do more than a hairpin, meaning straight back in. But just in case it ever comes up, staying outside the country for just a couple days is all that's ever required. There is absolutely no requirement to be out for a week. There's definitely no requirement to be out for 180 days. Nothing of the sort, not even suggested. If you talk to border control themselves, they're like, what? No, nothing like that. So that is, that is not something they can crack down on here because they officially want you to stay in the country. This is the official proper process for staying in the country initially. So if they're cracking down, it's on people not doing this rather than doing this. That's important to understand that this is following the rules. So, so that doesn't apply. So no one wants, so I realize that people will mistakenly want residency for a lot of just myths. No one actually wants residency because of a potential crackdown on border run uh, processes. That's that is the official way that you're expected to do it. It is, and, and we've explained on the show previously why they do that. It is a cost savings and security measure. Uh, it's simply a practical way to handle long-term tourist visas uh, and uh, to guarantee certain things like mobility and ability to leave the country and so forth. So it's, it's very effective at what it's supposed to do uh, and, and it's officially the way to do it. So no worries there and not, not a reason to ever talk about residency in Nicaragua. The second big reason why many people want residency over just visiting as a tourist is that there is more per it is more permanent and eventually leads to citizenship. No matter how much time one spends in a country as a tourist, they will never work towards citizenship as they would with a residency permit. Once you are a citizen, you have guaranteed access to the country for life, whereas tourists don't. And of course, tourist visa policies could change at any time. But once you're a citizen, no one can stop you from entering and spending as much time as you want. So, in general, and specifically in Nicaragua, all of this is incorrect. These are the kind of myths that people need to be aware of because a lot of uh, people trying to sell services will repeat these things. You may have heard this from any number of, of services. So first of all, you do not, under any circumstances, want citizenship in Nicaragua. 
I love Nicaragua. Few people are as enamored with Nicaragua as I am in general, but you do not want citizenship here, or you don't want to go through the process of becoming a citizen. If it was magically granted to me, sure, that would be fantastic, and I would happily accept that would be cool. But in the real world, getting citizenship is an unbelievably difficult path that has no guaranteed result. There is no certain path to citizenship. So first of all, the path to it is so hard. If you think becoming a citizen in the U.S. is hard, it's nothing compared to Nicaragua. They they simply don't have a process for it. The U.S. has a process, it's just barely possible to follow. But in Nicaragua, there is no official process. You have to do things to earn your way to citizenship and petition the government or hope they recognize you and hope that they like what you're doing and decide to offer it to you based on who knows how many circumstances. Yes, you can request it. Anyone can request it. And their government, they can grant it if they want. But officially, there's no path. And in real world, there's no reasonable way to do it. Like, it's ridiculously hard. Unless, of course, you're like diaspora and there's exceptions. But if you're just looking for uh, residence, for, for citizenship, assume it's off limits to you. While in theory, someone could have a story of someone who has gained it, and I have friends who have, but it's so hard. It is so unlikely that you're just rolling the dice, that you're going to do things for the next 30, 40 years of your life that will make the government that is here in 30 or 40 years look back and say, ah, oh, they were such good, whatever, tourist citizens, uh, residents, whatever, not, not citizens, we're going to give them citizenship. All, so, so the fact that you, that someone would want it doesn't apply, right? That, that, if, that itself is a myth that anyone actually wants citizenship. Again, people say it because they're confused, but no one actually wants it. None of the things they want come with that. And, uh, and, and that you need to get residency to get on a path to it. Also false. Residency is on no path to citizenship here. You are just as likely to head towards citizenship as a tourist or as a person living outside the country as you are as a, as a resident. Like that, there's nothing that says become a resident and then become a citizen. Does not apply in Nicaragua. So those are all false things. Um, and, and the idea that residency gives you some kind of permanence. Also, not a thing. You are just as permanent as a tourist as you are as a resident. So all of those concepts, while they are true that they could apply and often do in other countries, they have no applicability to Nicaragua. And one of the most important things that everyone needs to remember one is that every country is unique and sovereign. What one country does does not influence directly what another country does. Of course, countries learn from each other. So if Costa Rica does something that's really effective, Nicaragua may do the same thing by looking at them and going, oh, that was really good. Or in reverse, Nicaragua and Panama did something recently that was very good. They had long tourist visas and Costa Rica did not. And Costa Rica looked at them and said, oh, we should adapt what they're doing. And they did, and it is good. So countries learn from each other. So you see certain patterns emerge that just make sense. But that the fact that Costa Rica does X with their immigration uh, program has no influence directly on Nicaragua. So just because you've seen it somewhere else does not mean that you're going to, that applies here. It's always unique. The second thing is, is that of all those kinds of things that tend to be big global patterns, very rarely do any of them apply to Nicaragua. Nicaragua does its own thing much more than almost any other country. Not more than any country. Cuba definitely does things even more differently than Nicaragua. But just in general, if you hear trends that other countries do, oh, they tend to do this with the border. They tend to do this with, with COVID. They tend to do this with residency. The chances that those things will apply to Nicaragua are really low. Not that they wouldn't, nothing makes them definitely not apply, but you should never assume that something you know about another country is going to apply here unless you have a specific reason to believe so. So every bit of that logic as to why people may be looking for residency is wrong. None of those things are true of Nicaragua. So, and again, the same thing we said before, anybody who's normally, almost anyone, anyone who's looking for citizenship is confused. Uh, and the biggest, I forgot to say, the biggest reason with that is that while it's a really hard path, you also are forced to give up your other, whatever other citizenship you have in order to get Nicaraguan citizenship. It is not an additional. So many people are like, I'd love to have a second passport. Well, then the thing you're trying to do, get a Nicaraguan one, isn't part of that plan because they guarantee you only get one. If you're going the other direction, you can get multiple. But if you're coming in and you have to give up your other passports in order to get the Nicaraguan one. So 
a lot of the things I, I hear a lot of people talk to me about why they think they want residency or citizenship and often it's they, they don't know the difference between the two they think one leads to the other they want a passport but they don't realize they have to give one up like they haven't done any research and and are just making assumptions about Nicaragua and really dangerous ones um, and and they look at things like Panama things places like Panama who are great for getting second citizenship. They're very open, they have a direct path to it, you can know what, where you are along the path, uh, their passport's powerful and safe, it's desirable, it doesn't require to give you up, give up what you've had in the past. Um, I would love Panamanian citizenship. If they called and offered it to me under their current plan, I'd be like, yeah, cool, like that's sweet. Now, they're not going to, right? I have to go through all those processes and I don't wanna do that, at least not at this point in my life, but they have a, citizen, uh, a, a citizenship that's actually quite valuable and desirable. Whereas Nicaragua has a residency that is incredibly desirable and awesome. And so you have to look at what it is you're looking for and which things meet the goals that you have. So it's very important that you pick and choose both the country and the path that you're looking for based on what they offer and what makes sense in that country. You can't just say, I want citizenship and I want it to do certain things. And I can then say that and pick any country and just go for citizenship, you have to find out if that country offers you citizenship, how they would do it if they do, and if they do offer it, does that citizenship grant you the things that you expect it to? And quite often the answer to all those things is, you didn't do your research and you may be way off as to uh, what you're going to get out of this process. So you need to do that research for sure. For people coming to Nicaragua, you are definitely looking at residency type options, which could be nothing official, could be just being a tourist, but you're definitely not coming here looking for citizenship. It makes no sense in any way whatsoever. All right, continuing on, as for getting a residency before visiting a country, there are some reasons why people want to do that. Going back to my last point, it sometimes has to do with citizenship. Which, so any of those are wrong here. In Mexico, as an example, you have to live in the country for 18 months out of two years before you apply for citizenship, but you must have held your residency permit for five years. So many will get a residence permit and let it age out for three years, then move to Mexico for the final two years, then apply for citizenship, which is odd. Basically, they didn't want to live there, but I get that there's extenuating circumstances. This gives them citizenship in two years rather than five by aging out the residency. It doesn't. It still takes five. Uh, but but uh, there can be extenuating circumstances. Some people go a step further and have a paper residency, which is a residence permit to go to a country you actually never go to. It used to be the case that in Paraguay, you could get citizenship after just three years of holding residency, but there wasn't a specific amount of time that one had to spend, wasn't, sorry, wasn't a specific time that you had to spend in the country. I do remember that. So many would just get residency in Paraguay and spend just a day a year there for three years, then apply and get citizenship. Eventually they, of course, change the laws to get rid of this loophole. So this is important to know, again, no one is coming here for citizenship, so all of that is off the table. Also, all of those mechanisms mentioned don't exist here. There is no paper residency, there is no aging out, there is no uh, holding residency to get you a benefit. In fact, holding residency here uh, actually comes with some penalties. So it's one of the reasons you don't want to have residency is because when you have residency here, you must immediately prove that you are resident. Now, that's not a problem in the way that people imagine. Everything that people, there's so many myths that people bring to Nicaragua and say, well, then it's going to be a problem because I can't stay. No, you can always stay unless you're a criminal. You can always stay in Nicaragua. The you're going to have to leave thing only applies to you breaking the law and getting in a lot of trouble and having to go or refusing to do your paperwork or whatever. As long as you're doing what you're supposed to do and you come from a place that has relations that allow you to stay, you're good to come to Nicaragua, period. All these things about what am I gonna to do to be able to stay for permanence, that's all made up. It's all missed from other countries where those things are problems. There are some things you need to do, but you get here and you just follow the process and it's very simple. And you don't do it because you want residency. You don't do it because you don't want residency. You don't do it because of some mythical citizenship. None of that is applicable. It is simply, I want to be here and I get to do whatever the government tells me is the, is the easiest path for me at this particular time. So if you first arrive, residency is basically off the table. You have to be a tourist. You can't get residency ahead of time. And then once you're here, you probably don't want residency. The one thing I have found in all this time is, well, there's a few things it might make easier, but that's not really been proven. That you can get a car that you own in your name and can use it to drive over an international border. That is the one really significant thing that only applies to a few people, maybe 10 to 15%, that is very tangible and that I'm aware of. Nothing else. I've met no person who's been like, wow, want to get residency for and a reason. 
you only get residency other than the car thing because the government tells you you have to the government says you have to get residency it's that time you have to convert your tourism into residency or you have to do something that makes you completely non-resident either one here's your options and then you do what you're supposed to do that is it you don't want residency all the things people want it for are myths so all those things all this like it's building to something no if you get a uh, residency here for for five years at the end of that five years you have to prove that you've been here first of all all through the process you have to prove you're here you have to show up in person every six months and show that you've been here a reasonable amount of time not not all the time you're allowed to travel and do all kinds of things it's great it's very flexible if you miss your residency requirements you simply become a tourist again and you can reapply for residency. There's no problem, but they're defining which is a resident, which is a tourist. If you're a resident, you have to do these things. If you wanna go back to being a tourist or you wanna stay being a tourist, do these things. And in between, when you have not pushed your tourism so far that you have to become a resident, you simply stay as a tourist and you just move back and forth through the system as required in order to do what it is you want to do. And at no point are you significantly hampered by I can't travel, I can't stay. Whatever it is you want to do is likely to be no problem problem at all it's all just which paper you have to have at that specific time to make it happen so all of those things all of that you got to maneuver all these things for some future thing none of that applies here so I understand why people get this myth because they hear it from these advisors you get it from other countries you imagine Nicaragua must be just like Mexico it is not nothing like it so uh, in this regard in most regards, there's very little, even though it used to be Mexico, just like the U.S. is, the U.S. really doesn't give you much of a feel of Mexico, and neither does Nicaragua, and uh, they were both Mexico about the same amount of time ago, so, you know, uh, imagine how different Mexico is than the U.S. It's about the same amount of differences coming down here, other than we still speak Spanish down here primarily, but a lot, there's more Spanish speakers in the U.S. than there are in Nicaragua, so the differences are less than you think. Another reason some get residency in a country they don't live in is that they want to have a plan B. This is a myth universally. Uh, many in the states, including myself, hold residencies in countries we don't live in so that if something happens in our country, like a pandemic or a war, and we want to go elsewhere, we can do so with our residency permit. So that is not really necessary because, now I'm not saying it's a bad idea, I'm not saying that people have made a mistake in doing it, I'm saying that the way that they're describing it is wrong. It is not a plan B, it's a plan C. And why do I say that? Because Nicaragua is open to everyone. Well, at least all the people that we're mentioning in this particular example. If you live in the States, you live in Canada, you live in Western Europe, you're the people that are using this example and you want a plan B. And I would recommend having a plan B. Trust me, I enacted my plan B. I got out a long time ago, right? And happiest thing ever, best decision possible. The worst thing I did with my life is waiting so long to get out. Regret that beyond, beyond imagination, but, but, that said, Nicaragua is open to you always. Your plan B is always there. Every American, every Canadian has a plan B. And honestly, there's a lot of other countries that give you those plans as well. But not a ton, just, just a number of them, and you have to do your research. And some have plan Bs that are good enough that it isn't really a problem, like Mexico, right? You can go to Mexico and you get half a year to figure out the next step. So even though technically you don't have your residency in place, does it matter? You can have residency by the time you're not a tourist, so it's irrelevant, right? But with Nicaragua, you are immediately able to, for all intents and purposes, stay forever simply by arriving. You don't have to have anything in place. You don't have to prepare. You don't have to give them warning, right? If right now watching this video, it strikes you as not only am I relieved that I have a plan B in Nicaragua, but I'm going to enact it right now. Like, and if you're that driven, pause the video, Go pack your bags, call your loved ones, let them know you're moving to safe paradise and getting out of the war zone and craziness and drama and expense of the United States. Get everything ready, go book your ticket, and then while you're waiting for your flight, come back and finish the episode. Go ahead, we'll wait. Okay, I assume you pause it and you're back now. All right, great. So you can just say, you're looking forward to your flight. What do you have to look forward to? You're gonna get on that plane. You're gonna come to Nicaragua. If you're coming from the US, it's probably between two and six hours of flight time. You're going, unless you're like Alaska or Hawaii, you're gonna arrive at Managua. And by getting off the plane, you're gonna be handed 90 days with not automatic, but very easy, 90 more days worth of extensions to get you to half a year and at half a year, you need to step into Costa Rica or, Guada, uh, or Mexico or Belize for 10 or 15 minutes and come back in and get your next 180-day cycle, same as your first one. 
at some point. If you decide this is where you want to stay, that Plan B is the paradise that it looks like on my show, and some people find that it is, and some people find that it isn't, so it's a personal thing, of course, and your experiences here will vary. Um, but if you come and you decide you're going to stay, you just keep doing this cycle. Eventually, the government's going to tell you when you need to switch to a residency process. They will tell you what to do. They will walk you through it. You'll have to get a lawyer, of course. I mean, you don't have to, but you, trust me, you're going to get a lawyer. And it's not a big deal for the most part. Now, some of those requirements for residency have gone up, which is one of the reasons you want to avoid them ahead of time, right? Residency here, unless you're a retiree, one way or another requires you to show that you can and do spend money in the country. So if you're not actually living here, one, needing to invest large amounts of money to get your residency is going to be a pretty big negative that you're going to want to avoid. So that's something you definitely don't want unless you're here, but they don't require it unless you're here for a long time. So luckily, none of the problems that people assume with it exist, other than that there are some requirements for residency. So make sure that you're prepared either to move on if you can never get residency, but most people can find a way to do it. Like it's, they, if you're a good member of society and you're going to provide benefits to the country, they're going to find a way to let you stay. So come down and let them work with you, right? Nicaragua is not in the business of kicking people out. That's not what they do. A lot of countries are, most countries are, not Nicaragua. So give them that opportunity to show you that you have a path to staying, that they will call it tourism or call it residency or whatever, or call it a limbo state where your paperwork just disappears, whatever it takes, they'll probably find a way to let you stay. They're here to help you, not to hinder you. Not for altruistic reasons. They're doing it because it's good for the country too. They need to sell housing. They need to put people into rentals. They need to, uh, you know, kickstart the economy and and expats moving in are a really good way to do that at this point in their history. So for a lot of people having a plan B or a plan C, yeah, that's a great idea, but it's rare that you need to have residency. I don't know anywhere that actually, uh, there are places, so I'm not in any way suggesting there aren't, but they're not the norm that you need to have residency ahead of time. For example, if I want to have a plan B, if right now uh, I'm for some reason unable to, to live in Nicaragua, Nicaragua ceases to exist, and I don't want to return to the United States, which I wouldn't, um, what is what is our plan B? When, and long ago, when we did live in the United States and we knew that our plan B may include not being able to get on an airplane, our plan B was to make for Monterey as fast as possible. We lived in Texas, so that was a really easy drive. We had a car ready to go, and we knew that Mexico would accept us as long as the border was open, right? So we had all of our paperwork. We had go bags. We always knew that if anything was to happen, we would just jump in our minivan, throw the kids, throw the dogs in there, and drive to Mexico and figure the rest out from there. If we wanted to stay in Mexico, we could. Mexico just lets you stay. You don't have to have residency ahead of time. If we wanted to stay in any of the Central American countries, all of them gave us the option of just coming in and staying. So that's all, that's like nine countries right there. Panama would give us 180 days. That's all just within the driving distance of the United States. Um, all places you can just go to by plane, car, whatever you want. And all of them will give you a path to just staying without having to do anything ahead of time. And if you don't want to stay in any of them, you can just move back and forth between them forever. And for many people, that's actually a really good solution. I'm not saying that you want to depend on that. I'm saying that that option exists for you indefinitely. And the same thing exists in Europe. If you need to get to Europe, the Schengen, and again, you're North American or you have a similar visa situation, you simply get to Europe, you get 90 days. When that 90 days is up, yes, you have to move on unless you've worked out a residency option, which you probably can do within 90 days. But if you can't and you need to move on, not a big deal. We did this for years. You then move from the Schengen portion of Europe to the non-Schengen portion of Europe. Most of the non-Schengen Europe is 90 or 180 days in places like Albania. Uh, no, Albania is a year, I'm sorry, uh, where you can just stay and it's that easy. And then it resets your Schengen visa. So you can move right back. And it's not that you're loopholing or anything of the sort. You're following the rules and doing what they are perfectly happy with you doing. If you did that forever, there is no country in that zone that will complain in any way. You're doing exactly what they want. Yes, you're pushing it to the limit, but you're not going over the limit. You're not breaking any rules. You're following the rules exactly. And they're absolutely happy with that. And that's just some of the most desirable places on earth. If you wanted to go to much harder places, not that other places aren't desirable, but Southeast Asia, for example, a lot farther away, a lot harder to fly there. For example, language barriers are bigger, but very affordable. Lots of wonderful, friendly people with amazing food and low cost of living. You can do similar things there. And some of those countries will just let you stay. You don't have to have residency ahead of time. Some you do, right? But some you don't. 
So you have a lot of options. And of course, Africa is a really big place with lots of options, harder in many cases, but they exist and you can do similar things, either moving or arriving and then, uh, you know, extending a visa or whatever to be able to get residency. You have a world of options, quite literally, um, and there are very, very few places where you're going to have a strong benefit to having a residency ahead of time. It might be convenient. It may say, oh, here's the place I'm going to go. But if anything happens and they decide to deny you your residency, because they can do any country can do that at any time. Having a residency does not guarantee anything. Citizenship doesn't guarantee you anything. It's stronger, but it doesn't guarantee anything. Uh, they can always turn you away, but they can also always accept you. So you have all these options and staying in a situation that gives you flexibility is often the best one. The best thing to do, if you're not looking to enact your plan B, the best thing to do is enact your plan B, get out, right? But if you're not gonna do that, the best thing to do is know many options, how they work, keep up to date on them, and if something happens, make decisions that make sense based on that point in your life. Do you have a second citizenship? You're a passport holder somewhere else? Maybe you just go there. If you have several places you're interested in for residency, pick the one that's doing best for you at the time that you need to leave, start there, right? That's basically what we did for a long time and it worked extremely well. And I think people really, especially Americans, become very confused about how hard it is to go other places because it's so hard to come to the United States. And the U.S. is so against immigrants and so against long-term tourists and those things. It's so difficult and it's so unfriendly that, that most of the world is super friendly to that and encouraging of that and wants that because it helps their economy. It does so many good things that uh, that they, they feel they need to do all this paperwork. They feel they need, and there's specific places where you may need to do that. But in general, you have loads of options. Many are very wonderful options and you don't have to prepare ahead of time for them. And simply being armed with a little bit of knowledge will go as far as you possibly need. Know where you need to fly out of, know how much a ticket should be, know which airlines fly there, that kind of stuff. Yeah, be a little bit ready, have a go bag, but you don't have to have residency or citizenship or be on a path to anything at any point uh, for those things. You may have a life plan. I want to live in Germany for the rest of my life. I want to be a citizen. I want my kids to be citizens. I want to be able to vote. I want them to be able to vote. I want my grandkids to be automatically Germans. Great. You're going to need to plan around their citizenship process, whatever that is. And that's going to be very specific to them. But if you're simply looking for a plan B, no, you don't need to do those things. Unless you have a very specific country, you're, you only want a plan B in one very specific place. Yeah, do whatever it takes for them, but actually look it up. Not very many places are going to require very much work. All right, he then has a long paragraph that I'm not going to read about why some people want residency or citizenship uh, based on banking regulations. This doesn't apply to Nicaragua. We, You can get a bank account more or less no matter what, even as a tourist. We know tourists who have them. Um, you get more flexibility as a resident and more flexibility as a citizen, but um, it's neither a place that limits your banking because you're not a resident, nor is it a place where people desire banking. So this area in general, um, that's not a benefit, so it doesn't apply. Um, Panama used to. It might still, but it's it's not very big. So he wraps up. These are many of the reasons I've seen more advantageous to get a residency permit. Let me know if you agree, if there's other considerations I'm not taking into account. So I think, I mean, in general, except for the plan B thing, I think overlooks a few things, but in general, all of his points are true if you're not talking about Nicaragua, but talking about average countries. But none of those are applicable to Nicaragua. And that's really our point is that people are getting these myths. They're getting these, this hearsay, these wives tales of this is how the world works and you have to do these things. And it's generally services that sell relocation services or residency services, right? Oh no, I, even if you wanna move, just get your residency moving, give us money, let's get this process going. And it sounds great. Oh, I can have my residency ready. I can do my, really just move. Right, the thing we always say about Nicaragua, if you think you wanna live here, get on a plane, get down here today. Maybe wait a few weeks till the flights are cheaper, right? But be reasonable, just come down. Why wait? And you say, well, but I have a career, I have to wrap up things, I have to sell a house. Been there, done that, did that. So fine, do those things, but you don't need to do any paperwork because you could come today. Like you could literally, if the rest of your life allows, throw it and your family's okay with it, your, your, your husband and your kids are like, yep, yep, okay, let's go, right? Then, okay, throw your stuff into a suitcase, get on the plane, ta-da, right? It's that easy. So when you realize how easy it is to get a permanent situation here or to, to begin a permanent situation here, that, um, and nothing's permanent, right? 
the thing about Nicaragua is nothing is officially permanent and everything is effectively permanent. So no matter what you want to do, the first step is just getting on the plane. Once you're here, you can see what the options are. You have six months to figure out what the next six months is going to be. And all you have to do is drive across the border and drive back in, not really drive, you walk across the border and walk back in. It's very simple. It is a very minor thing. And a lot of people talk to me about how they really, oh, I just got to avoid the border runs. Okay, like, look, I get it. I don't want to have to do the border run every six months. I don't want to have to put it on my calendar and remember it. And some of you know, I forgot it this last time and I got into a bit of trouble. Um, not like, not like a lot of trouble, but I was in a bit of trouble. Um, and I had to go deal with that. And like, it's annoying and it's, it's not ideal, but it's also driving into Costa Rica for a few hours. Like, have you heard about Costa Rica? I'm not saying you should move there before Nicaragua, but it's not a bad place to be banished to for a day, right? My kids look forward to going to Costa Rica if we're gonna stay there at all. All these restaurants, things to do, entertainment, like it's, it's a variety. And what if we had wanted to go to Mexico instead? Like, oh no, we have to go to Mexico for a week? That's terrible. No one has to go for a week. I'm just saying if you need to go out and back in, why not stay, right? And we already have plans to potentially go to all these places just because, well, you know, our date's gonna come up. Should we go somewhere for fun? Yes, we should do that, right? It's fantastic. So. Yes, I know there's some people for whom it's a real hardship to travel to the border, um, but be aware that if you have residency, you still have to go to Managua every six months. And it's real simple. It's not expensive. It's it's just, you know, take the bus or drive in, or if you live there, just walk around and it's just getting a, an ID card reprinted. But they check that you're there. They, they check in on you a little bit and you're not giving up something every six months. It's just a lot easier. But the Costa Rica trip is so easy, it's so trivial. I think people are completely overlooking, one, just how close every border is. And no matter where you are in Nicaragua, the border's close. Um, and how simple this process is. Um, when people complain about it, like, trust me, we all complain like, oh, tomorrow I gotta go to Costa Rica. Like, oh no, it's such a hard day. But but to, to make life plans around something so trivial, the number of other things that are so much bigger in life are so numerous that it's hard to imagine how this really simple little pro uh, process of just stepping over the border could ever bubble up to being a decision factor or on anything. It's just, it's one of the easiest errands you're gonna have to do. I mean, it's literally, uh, if I had to like do any little thing living in the United States, oh, we have to go to a specialty shop to go shopping for something. We got to, you know, deliver something to, to friends and family. Like it literally was more work to go to the neighboring city and visit our family when we lived in Texas than it is to go to Costa Rica and back living here. It took two or three times as much fuel. It took one or two hours longer. It was more dangerous. It was more expensive. Like there's no piece of it. And it was a far less scenic drive and you didn't get to say, because we always do this, ah, I gotta spend the day in Costa Rica, right? And everybody, even the Nicaraguans are like, oh man, that's cool. It's not, but you know, but it sounds really neat. Yeah, I had to leave the country for the day. And uh, you know, everyone just has this reaction to it. Like you don't get that running errands in the United States yet running errands in the United States, you don't decide to change your life because every six months you have to run one annoying errand. So just keep that in perspective, but thank you for joining me. Like, and subscribe. Thank you so much for these questions and comments. I really appreciated both of them today. These are very good. Get down any of you uh, in the comments and, and ask your own questions. I love being able to answer these. They really do help me, especially right now while I'm super busy with things. It, it lets me get really good content out. Um, I've gotten some really good feedback on these, right? People are like, I'm really loving this stuff because it's it's not me rambling. I mean, it is, but it's not the same, right? We're, we're addressing specific things um, and helping out real people. So uh, I really appreciate uh, the ideas and the, and the questions. Um, and as always, if you could share this on social media, just take the link and throw it on Reddit and Facebook or Twitter, well, if that thing's around, <laughs> what a mess that is. Um, and uh, any of those things, any of those things, just get more people to see it. Tell someone if everyone took just one moment a day and, and told someone about the show, you really should check this out. Nicaragua is way more interesting than you're imagining. Not only would it be great for the country, but it would be, it'd be pretty great for me too. So thank you so much. And if you'd like to sponsor the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. Just go to that link and it's super easy and very much appreciated. Thank you so much to everyone who does that. I got coffee today, yesterday. It's been a very good week with coffee and uh, which is good because it's been a very busy week for me.